Did you know you can breed ants? We have two colonies of the same species that are both having a nuptial flight inside of their own homes. In theory, we can gather up the male and female ants and breed them together to make new colonies. It sounds great, but will it actually work? Keep watching to find out. But first, welcome to another episode of The Ant Keeper, where I upload every week about all things ant related. If you find yourself enjoying this video, then subscribe and join the AK Colony. Your support really helps me out and I really appreciate it. These last couple of months, I've been watching two of our colonies grow bigger and bigger in size, to the point where the colonies have begun to produce alates. And this got me thinking, what if we could breed these two colonies together to make fertile queens? I've wondered even if it could be done. If you don't know what an alate is, here's a quick catch up. All colonies start out as a fertile queen that soon thereafter begins to lay eggs. Within a couple of weeks to months, depending on the size, the first generation of workers will begin to take their first steps, then the next generation. Then before you know it, hundreds of workers are living in unison, all from that one original queen. Once a colony gets big enough, the queen will start to produce these winged ants called alates. The alates are either male or female. The males are called drones, and the females are called fe females. Yeah and these will be the future queens. The females look fairly bulky in size, and the males have a strangely small head in comparison to the rest of its body. When the time is just right under the perfect weather conditions, and during a set period of months in the year, these winged ants will run out of the colony and fly in the wind, searching for other elates from different colonies of the same species to mate with. Once mated, the drones will die, fulfilling the job they were made to do. The queens will usually drop their wings, a sign that she is fertile, and go on the search for a nice hidden location to dig out a founding chamber to lay her eggs. Then the cycle starts again. Given that so much has to happen to get two colonies to the stage of having a lates, you can see why I'm so excited to trial this experiment out. Let's take a closer look at both of these colonies. Both of these colonies are of the genus Polyrachis, the species I'm not quite sure about. This colony is the smaller of the two, with around 100 workers or so. They live inside this Waitong nest I made, and love to soak up the moisture and humidity around this part of the nest. See the huge pile of brood? This colony is healthy and looking forward for a big year of growth. Notice the elates? Can you see something odd? All of the elates are drones. There is not a single female elate. In contrast, let's check out the other colony. This team of hard-working ants are much bigger in size compared to the other colony, with around 200 workers. This colony has just female elates, no drones. I'm not sure why this is. If you have any ideas, let us know in the comments section below. Both of these colonies have been having nuptial flights over the past two weeks, but they always seem to have them during the day when I'm at work, which honestly kills me to miss. But somehow, whilst I was feeding the ants, they chose to fly late in the evening. What a surprise! They both began to try and fly out of the homemade outworlds about 30 minutes ago. Now is the time to collect up the elates and put them together in a type of breeding pen. So here's my plan. I've put fluon around a plastic container and poured in some sand for a natural feel. Next, I'll keep the bright lights on both nests and outworlds to help stimulate the ants to keep moving around in case they decide to call it a day and fly another time. I'm going to manually collect the elates one by one with tweezers. This way I won't get any stray elates flying around the ant room. Once I've collected all the elates from both colonies, I'll keep the lights on them and leave them to socialize for two days. Hopefully with a bit of luck, we might see some queens running around with no wings. What do you think will happen? It's been two days. I finally walked into the ant room to see what the elates have been up to. I was not expecting to see such a landscape of dead drones everywhere. Initially, I was worried that maybe all the drones had died not fulfilling the job. But then I noticed a glistening golden gaster running around. A queen without wings. A promising sign. AK Colony? It seems we have a dozen queens running around with their wings off. Did the experiment work? Well, we don't know just yet. Interestingly, some of the queens haven't dropped their wings off at all. Probably around 40% of the queens have no wings, and the others do. I'd say about 90% of the drones have died already, hopefully because they have mated with the queens. It's time now to gather up all the wingless queens and move them into test tube setups with mini-attached outworlds for them to gather honey and protein. 
since these girls are semi-colostral, they need the space to go out and find their food. If left in a test tube closed up on both ends of cotton, the queen will constantly pull at the cotton, trying to escape. You know, it's a strange feeling to gather up queens like this and put them in test tubes. And instead of spending hours and hours searching for one single queen ant, it's so weird. I wonder if these queens really are fertile. That would be amazing, don't you think? Whilst I was collecting these queen ants, I noticed something. What's this? What is this queen carrying? It almost looks like she's carrying a small batch of eggs. Surely she hasn't laid any eggs already. Where could the eggs have come from though? Maybe she was holding some eggs when I pulled her out of the outworld. world. But when I was doing that, I don't remember seeing any eggs exposed in the outworld world when I was doing so. Normally the eggs are buried, hidden away in the dark. That's so strange. Honestly, I'm a little skeptical. I know it's possible that a queen can lay eggs within 48 hours of mating, but these aren't exactly ideal conditions for laying eggs. I mean, it's so bright and crowded in here. AK Colony? I'm not really sure what's going on here. We'll have to keep a close eye on her. For the rest of the queens left in the breeding pen, we'll clean up the dead drones and wait to see if any more of them drop off their wings. After a week, I'll collect any queens remaining and house them anyway. A queen doesn't necessarily have to drop her wings to be fertile. In fact, we have some colonies where the queen still has her wings attached months after laying her first eggs. Of the possible fertile queens, we have 15. To add to the experiment, I've housed two queens together in two test tube setups. Most ant species are able to house two queens in the same colony, although I'm curious if this species can or not, especially considering both of these queens come from the same colony. So AK Colony, what do you think? Are these queens fertile? Do you think many of them will even survive? What about that one queen that had a small group of eggs? What's going on there? Once I get the rest of these queens housed and fed, I'm going to put them all on heat to promote growth in the developmental cycle. Then when the queens begin to lay their first batch of eggs, if they do that is, I'll share an update on how they're going and how many survived. Being a smaller species of polyrachis, I think these should lay within the next couple of weeks. What a thrilling experiment this has been. If you made it this far, then make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. It really helps me out. Also, have you subscribed and become part of the AK colony? If you haven't, then what are you waiting for? Subscribe and be a part of one of the fastest growing colonies here on YouTube. I'd love to know from you. Do you think the queen ants are fertile? What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you everyone for watching this week's episode. I'll see you on the next video. Until then, Ant Keepers Unite.